Okay, so here's the situation. We have two balls with a charge of Q on them. They've got a mass M, and we're told that they're sitting without moving at, in this configuration right here, where they're spread apart at some angle, which I've called phi. The distance of the, the string holding them is one meter. And I have to find this distance down here from the center point over here as D. This is a little different than I did it for you in my office, but I think this, in retrospect, I think this is better. So over here, I've listed the pertinent information. We're told that the angle is 20 degrees. Uh, the mass is 3 grams, which is 0 0.003 kilograms. We don't know Q. That's what we're trying to find. And we don't know D. Uh, D is something that I just put in there, but we can find it pretty easily from trig. Notice we've got a hypotenuse of a right angle here. I should draw that in just to make that clear. We've got a right triangle. We've got a hypotenuse. We've got uh, an opposite side, so we can use the sine function. Sine of phi is defined as the opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be d over 1 meter, so all I've done is solve this equation for d. And when I get this, that d is equal to the sine of phi meters. So I'm going to use that later. Um, so down here, I've drawn a free body diagram. In, in my office, I drew a free body diagram of everything in here. And I don't need to do that because... There's symmetry here, right? These are the same masses and the same charge. So I just have to draw a free body diagram on one of them. And that's the typical approach when you're solving these Newton's second law problems. Uh, so I draw a free body diagram on one of the balls. It happens to be this one, but it could have been the other one just because they have the same charge. And all I've done here is I've labeled angles and forces. This is the tension in the string there. This is the, the force of gravity, which I've, uh, force of gravity here, which is defined as mg. And this is the Coulomb force, which we know is kq squared over r squared. In this case, r is going to be d squared, and that's actually a mistake. I should make that 2d squared for how I've actually defined that up here. No problem. So that's 2d squared, and that's just the distance between these. That's the distance, because what we're, this force that's acting on this ball is coming from this ball. So the distance between those here is 2d. No big deal. You could call that, um, you could define this a little differently if you want to. This is how I've done it. So over here, I have applied Newton's second law. We know that this is in equilibrium, which means uh, nothing's accelerating, so I can apply this. The sum of the forces equals ma, and here, because it's in equilibrium, a equals zero. So the sum of the forces equals to zero. And, and again, to be explicit here, I should make these vectors. And the reason that's important is because now, because this is, I know that the, the vector sum is zero, I can solve this in different directions. I can say that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. I'll do the y's first. If you notice, the in the y direction, which will be this way, all I've got, if I look down here, I've got the force of gravity, and then I've got this component of the tension that goes up, kind of like this. There's a component that way, and a component this way in the x direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work, look at this one because we're looking at the y direction. And from trig, this component is going to be T cosine of phi. So I've done that over here when I'm summing my forces in the y direction. Uh, minus, that's the gravitational force, which is negative because it's going downward. The other one, T cosine of phi, is going upward, so it's positive. And I know that that equals to zero because the whole thing equals to zero because it's not moving. So I can solve for this. If I do that, T equals mg over cosine of phi. Remember, g here is 9.81 meters per second squared, the, the acceleration due to gravity. So I've got this handy expression, mg over cosine phi for T. I've got this handy expression, d equals sine phi. Units on that are meters. So now I've got that. I basically solved for everything I need to solve for except for the charge, which is what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to sum the forces in the x direction, which is what I've done starting here. The x direction is 0. Let's look at that and see what that is. I've got the Coulomb force in the x direction. That's going to be negative because it's going that way. And I've got this component of the tension in the x direction, which will be positive. So this, of course, is going to be T sine phi. Uh, sine phi would be the side of the triangle here, which is exactly the same as this. So, And then this is just going to be KQ squared over 2D squared. So I can do that here. T sine phi minus the Coulomb force, I ha which is this one. I haven't unpacked it yet. I just wrote it like this to save time. I'm going to unpack it eventually because I have to to get to Q, right? So I'm going to come over here. This is equal to 0. 
I'm going to solve for the Coulomb force, which is just T sine of phi. Now I'm going to unpack it, K Q squared, and again, I made a mistake here. This should be 2D squared uh, equals T sine of phi. So I come down here, and I solve this equation for Q. What I'm going to come up with is this should be a 4 right here, because if I squared 2D, I'm going to get 4D squared, right? So I'm going to have 4D squared uh, times T sine of phi all over K. So at this point, I need to do some more substitutions because notice I don't really know what T is. I don't really know what D is, but I've solved for those quantities over here. I solved for T right here, mg over cosine phi. I solved for D up here, sine of phi. So I'm going to plug all that in here. I'm going to, so I'm going to get 4, which comes down. D squared, remember, is sine of phi from right there. So when I square that, I get sine squared phi times another sine phi gets me sine cubed phi. And then that's going to be over k. And then when I, when I plug in the t value, I've got mg over cosine phi, which is here, mg over cosine phi. And then because q is squared in this equation, I'm taking the square root of all that. And you have numbers for all of this stuff. We know what 4 is. We know what phi is. So we can just plug in the sine of phi there, cubed. We know what the mass is. We know what g is. We know what um, k is, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we know what the cosine of phi is. So we just plug all these numbers into our calculator, and out pops Q. All right, hope this helps.